Hey there, how's it going? This is James Tripp. This is a video for James Tripp Chaos Wave. Title of the video is, I screwed up this regression. Now I dropped a video a few days ago, it was called Why I Quit Hypnotherapy. And inside of that video, I mentioned that if people were interested, I would tell the story of the client who taught me the value of personal power in change work and therapy, that is connecting people to their personal power, having them come from a place of very clear, very grounded power. Now, I also said that I, as I mentioned, I quit hypnotherapy in 2013. This story is from 2015, because as I said in the previous video, I continued to get referrals for change work, even though I switched across to coaching. So still doing a fair bit of change work on a referral only basis. This person was referred to me uh, for, from a friend, by a friend, and it was for a fear of flying. So this video is sponsored by the HTE Practitioner Training, that's Hypnosis for Transformation and Empowerment. This is a small group, three-month training program going deep into skills, understandings, and tactics for empowering people so as they can become transformative forces within their own lives. Begins May 2021. If you're interested, there'll be a link around here somewhere. Now, before I say what happened here, I need to say something about my history, my own history with regression work in hypnotherapy. When I was a hypnotherapist, I never did any regression work. I was actually ideologically opposed to it. The way I worked was very much working from our present and working into our future. And I didn't like to entrench the idea in people that they were a victim to their past in somehow, that their past was what was running the game. I wanted them, even at this point I didn't have that clarity, I wanted them to know uh, that they had the power to recreate their life from this point going forward. So when I was a hypnotherapist, I didn't do any hypnotic regression work at all. I came to do hypnotic regression work by a strange and indirect path. What actually happened is I do a lot of self-development stuff, you know, for myself, as I've mentioned in other places. And I've been doing a lot of shadow work. And I hired somebody who was allegedly a shadow work practitioner to facilitate some work with me as client. And I wanted to know also, um, you know, what, what they might do, because I like to learn from people. It's one of the ways I actually learn is I become a client of other people, and that way I get to experience their facilitation, but I also get to experience the impact of it. So it's a very useful thing to do. So I'd hired this particular person who put themselves forward as a shadow work practitioner. And I'm not gonna go into the details of this, but basically, um, I think they were incompetent. They didn't know anything about hypnosis. So they didn't understand how they were using language or how they were framing things. And they were caught in what I call a truth trap. The practical upshot of this was even though I knew what they were doing, because I was playing full out as a client, they managed to hypnotize me into changing and modifying some memories from the past. I, I knew this was what was going on in the moment, right? And even though I knew it, and even though I know all that I know, this person, uh, insistently reframing my past led to a change in my perception of my past that even though consciously I was trying to reject that change, once it had been seeded, it was extremely toxic, right? I'm not going into the details here because But basically as a result of it, for two weeks following this piece of work, I was having terrible dreams. I felt insecure like I hadn't done for years. It had messed me up big time. Now you might think, well, James, what's that got to do with regression work? Well, basically, even though he didn't frame it as such, he'd done a piece of regression work with me. He had gone back into my past and reconstructed something and it had a powerful, effect on me. I had to do a lot of work to go beyond the uh, effects, the negative effect that had been induced. So as the person that I am professionally, I am a uh, facilitator of change. My fascination in life is in how our minds render up our experience, shape our engagement with the world. 
it occurred to me that it was powerful. And if it could be negatively powerful to that degree, of course it could also be positively powerful. So it was that experience that led me to go, okay, I'm gonna start looking into regression work now. I'm gonna start playing around with this stuff. Now, fortunately for me, I have a lot of good friends in the world of hypnosis and hypnosis training. So I hit people up for tips and I uh, got some mentoring from some friends of mine who were expert in regression work. And I started exploring with it. And my first few attempts with it or first few goes with it was spectacularly um, effective. I got some really good changes happening with people, really impactful changes happening right off the bat. I know a bunch of people watching this who are into regression, so I'm going, yeah, of course, James, why weren't you doing it earlier? As I say, I was ideologically opposed, but this is the pragmatist in me going, all right, this stuff cooks, this really works. So I had a series of massively highly impactful hits with clients doing regression work. I can't remember how many, you know, a handful or so, maybe, a dozen at most. And then I got this particular client. And I was on such a roll doing the regression work at the time that, of course, it was a no brainer. This is what I was going to do. And I ran through, started to go in, go into the process. We went back, an event came up, and he completely decomposed. And we got nothing good happening. And afterwards, he was worse. He was unquestionably worse. His fear of flying had got worse. He was feeling more nervous, more on edge in other areas of his life. It's like it had moved out from just the fear of flying to other parts of his life. It was a terrible piece of work. And I just couldn't understand what had happened. You know, what did I do here that was different? from all the people that I've worked with before that I'd had success with. What did I do that was different? So I looked at it from a variety of different angles and I, and I concluded that actually I didn't do anything different. What was different was the attitude of this particular client and his developmental path in life. It occurred to me this particular client was a very disempowered individual. They were, if I was using uncharitable language, they were living in a victim stance in relation to the world. They felt they had no power, everything was oppressing them. In fact, what they were was living in their day-to-day -day life from a, um, what's called a kind of vulnerable landscape, a, a, land, a psychological landscape that is very vulnerable to what people call traumatization. So this was a person very much out of touch with their personal power. And what had actually occurred was that he as a person had not really developed in any way, not really grown at all in himself and in his power and in his sense of capacity since the occasion of um, traumatization, let's call it that, the significant emotional event that we'd return to. There had been no personal growth. So what didn't happen was him bringing back a more resourced present self to that older material to do the work. Everyone else that I'd worked with up until that point, they had grown beyond who they were when the original experience that was still kind of a driver experience had occurred, right? And that's the difference that makes the difference often with regression. If you don't take care of this on purpose, you just kind of leave it to the default processes that are often taught. If a person has significantly grown beyond the past experience, um, they will often do good transformative work. If they have not significantly grown since the past experience, they may do good transformative work, but you have to work a lot, lot harder to stabilize them and resource them and bring in resources during the work. Okay, now, once you realize this, basically what I'm saying here is somebody's sense of capability, personal power, 
all of these sorts of things, they make a difference. They are prerequisites in a lot of ways to doing good um, regression work, you know. And the only proxy that's going to work for that is your ability to bring in that empowerment as you go. It's seriously strong empowerment. Once I realized this and once I recognized this, it meant that I could be a lot more effective with that kind of regression work. I'll tell you in a minute why I'm putting regression in quotes there. And I could make a better gauge on this client and what we need to connect this client with before we do the regression work. So now if I'm ever going to do regression work, I'm taking stock. Where's this person at? And I want to make sure that they're well equipped. They've got all the big guns they need before they go back and they do any reworking of past stuff, transforming their relationship with past experiences, um, or even modifying the content of that experience, which is something that can be done. Some people don't approve of it, but it can be done. Um, so why am I putting regression in quotes, by the way? I want to say something about that. I don't want to regress people ever. I don't want to do that. Why would I want to regress somebody back to how they were X number of years ago when a problem happened? I don't want to do that. I want to have them put that past material back together in a new way in the presence of their updated, more resourced self. Now, I never had a term for this until I trained with somebody called Lisa Schwartz, who's excellent. She has a, an approach to working with complex PTSD that um, she calls a comprehensive resource model. And there's something that she shared which made complete sense of this little distinction she shared, which is the idea of remembering. Okay, re-membering. Membering, putting together, re-again, putting back together something from the past. Not going back into the past, but putting that back together. And specifically putting that back together in the presence of a powerfully resourced self that can do the transformative work necessary. Because so much of the time, this is what, um, this is a big distinction in how I do hypnotic facilitation work. It isn't me being the super resource practitioner working on the lost and vulnerable client. It's me bringing out the resources and the power of that client and facilitating them in engaging with transformative work within themselves. Okay, I've talked about this in the past in terms of what I call the trance and transcendence model, trance and transcendence, um, that we live our lives through these trances and we can often regress back into problem trances. But our transcendent self is our sort of grown adult self, our resource self, the self that's in touch with our ground of being, our power, this kind of thing, that is able to be with these other aspects of self and make powerful transformative change. So um, that's kind of my approach. Now, I, I still, to this day, if I'm doing change work based stuff, uh, you know, as I've mentioned many times, I've done a lot of work with military vets who have got traumatic experiences in the past First and foremost, most important thing before going back and doing anything is to make sure that person is fully connected to their power in this moment. So they're able to go back and be with that material in a transformative way. Really, really essential stuff. So um, that client, that fear of flying client, they showed me that, they taught me that lesson. Empowerment is essential. My older way of approaching hypnotherapy, it never was an issue because I was always working for an empowerment place to start with. That's what I was doing. I just didn't have the clarity to see that's what I was doing at the time. And it's not the case that I used to think that there's this sort of dichotomy. Either, uh, either we're looking at unconscious patterns and unconscious stuff that's running the game and material that's encoded from the past, or where in this sort of conscious empowerment, I'm in the driving seat of my life. It's not, those are yin yang um, complementary parts. Okay, and this is the way I tend to work now is I'm working both with the unconscious, the patterns, the drivers from the past, all of this kind of thing, but I am ensuring that my clients are fully empowered to do that work. And what you get there is a virtuous circle between those two positions, the trances that are being reworked and the transcendent self.
I feel I could have probably explained that better, but this is still the first shot on this video and it's probably the only shot that I'm gonna do because the day is running long. If you have any questions about this, please do make use of that comment section. If you got some goodness from it, you can hit that thumbs up. Of course you always can. And you can subscribe to the channel as well because that way we get to continue the conversation when new videos come out. Okay, looking forward to when we next connect. Thank <laughs> you.